people who were seriously injured and just the heroic action of uh, the firefighters uh, today. And I'm going to have the Chief Hodges go into exactly what happened, but I'm just going to step back and allow these men and women who responded today uh, give you an overall narrative of what happened, and then we'll answer any questions that you may have right now. I'm going to turn it over to Chief Pfeiffer to go through the particulars, and then we'll uh, turn it over to uh, the rest of the personnel to explain exactly what took place here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At 2.14 this afternoon, we had a very challenging fire. Fire was on the third floor that was blowing into the hallways trapping people above. It was so dangerous that the fire fighters had to make three rope rescues, which is something very unusual for us to do at one fire. Overall, we had 18 people injured, five of them in critical condition, and one of those people in critical conditions, we were just told, passed away at the hospital. This fire was so challenging that it took a second alarm assignment working very, very quickly to rescue all the people that were trapped. So I'd like to turn it over now to Chief Hodges to explain those rope rescues and the rescues that were made in the hallway. Chief. Good afternoon. The fire was uh, a very challenging fire, as mentioned. Um, we received the call and arrived on scene in three and a half minutes. Uh, the units arrived. There were numerous people on the fire escape, uh, escaping the third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth floors. Um, there was a heavy, heavy smoke condition throughout the upper floors of the building. Uh, as our members uh, did a survey of the building, they noticed there were uh, people trapped that were hanging out the windows on the side uh, alley up on the fifth floor. We have an evolution for that. It's called the life-saving rope evolution, where our members uh, attach themselves to a rope, and then another member goes, goes on to the rope and goes off the side of the building, goes down to the window, and grabs the person that is trapped by the fire. Uh, this happened three times at this fire. Three firefighters performed this evolution. We usually have one of these a year or two. This was three at one fire, a very heroic action. And all of those people, unfortunately, are in critical condition, they, but they're at the hospital. While that was going on, we had our engine company moving in the front door of the building and up to the third floor with the hose line. At, on the third floor where the fire apartment was, we had heavy fire that was blowing out into the hallway of the, from the fire apartment. The fire that was blowing out was blocking off the exit pathway of the occupants trying to escape down the stairs. So as the engine company moved in to extinguish that fire, our ladder company members moved up and went up to the upper floors. Unfortunately, they found three victims unconscious on the upper floors of the building. All of the victims were quickly removed and brought down to awaiting EMS members who administered advanced life-saving care and took them off to area hospitals. One of the firefighters who went over on the rope is a probationary firefighter with less than one year on the job. So he's had quite the introduction into the FDNY. I'm going to pass it off to Chief Fields, who can give us more details on the patients. Good afternoon. Um, EMS units on scene transported, treated a total of 18 patients. 12 were transported to area hospitals. Five of those 12 were critical patients. Um, one succumbed to their injuries at the hospital. Um, the paramedics, as um, everybody's saying right now, did a phenomenal job once fire operations brought the patients out um, to extend life and get people to the area hospital so they can get continued care. Two yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Now I want to introduce you to the two firefighters who went over, two of the three that went over on a rope and rescued people uh, from, from the upper floors of the building. Come on up. Tell me your name. And, uh, Thank you. Uh, my name is Probationary Firefighter Jason Lopez. Upon arrival to the fire, we got reports of victim hanging out of the fourth side of the building. We made our way up to the roof, and once I went over the parapet, looked over the parapet, and showed them not to jump, that we're coming down to rescue them. This is um, the same drill that we work on every Monday with the truck and every Tuesday with the engine. It all starts back to the FDNY Academy at the Rock, all the training with the rope. I'd like to thank them as well. I'd like to thank the Harlem Hilton as well, 6928 for all the training that we do at the firehouse. We always train like the real thing, so when the real thing happens, we know what we're doing. Um, I also like to thank the firefighter to my right, Katso, firefighter Katso, who lowered me, trusted him with my life. This is an evolution that we do every week at the firehouse, and it's just like we train. Uh, thank you. Um, cuando, cuando llegamos al fuego, <clears throat> ellos, ellos lo dijo nosotros que había gente um, gigándose por fuera de la ventana eh, en, el, en el lado 4 del edificio que es el lado a la derecha había tres gente en la ventana y cuando llegamos ahí notamos que había gente mirando por la ventana y cuando subimos para el rufo le dijimos que no brinque que lo vamos a rescatar y pusimos eh, la soga de rescate para usar como nosotros entrenamos en la casa de, de fuego Todos los lunes entrenamos, todos los martes también entrenamos. Y eh, el bombero a mi derecha, que se llama Bombero Cazzo, fue que me, me bajó. Yo confié con él, con mi vida, para rescatar a la gente que estaban ahí. Y algo que siempre entrenamos en la casa. Y soy y muy orgulloso uh, por pues, tener la oportunidad. Um, me siento muy feliz completarlo. Gracias. Two things, uh, DJ. See if we can get um, a, a FD team to put it on your iPad because we want to be able to show you exactly what took place. Because we have a video, so they have it from the helicopter. But it's Chief, you want to talk about yes, yeah. yes, yes. So it's called the Life Saving Rope uh, Evolution, and that rope is only used for saving lives. Yes, the firefighters are on the roof. One of them looks over the side of the building and sees where the person is trapped, what window they're at. While he's doing that, the other firefighter is setting up the rope so that they can lower a firefighter right over the roof, down to the window, and grab the person out of the window and take them down to the ground. That's exactly what happened. Three times today, which is, like I said, very unusual. So is the patient hanging up, holding on to the firefighter's waist? Yes. No. I mean, the, the best way to do it is we, can, if we can communicate with the patient, we ask them, put your arms around our, our neck and your legs around our waist, and we hold on to them very tight, and we just descend down to the ground. Yes, unfortunately, due to the severity of this fire, one of the victims had to basically jump out the window. They were hanging there for a little bit, and they couldn't hold on any longer and fell. This was just pretty much before we got here. Uh, they were, they were uh, in the alley on the side of the building when we arrived. No, I don't know. A person... I can't, I'm, it's still, that we have to iron out all the details on exactly which of the critical victims was deceased. Did this survive the fall? Did this yes. Are the people related in any way who were in these units? The people that were rescued by the rope were all in the same apartment. The people that were rescued from the hallway were from different apartments. We still have to iron out the details on exactly where they came from. No.
And now the fire marshals are doing an investigation, and we'll we'll learn about that later. Chief, we heard, uh, I know it's early for the call, but we heard from multiple residents who had concerns about a lot of e-bikes uh, in front of the building and a lot of batteries being charged throughout. Is there any strong suspicion that it could be an e-bike fire? Not at this time. Uh, the marshals are up there now. They're digging around, looking for the cause, and we'll, we'll know the answer to that later later this evening. The, the, uh, now we want to thank both President Levine for joining us as well. Um, there's, from the front of the building, <clears throat> you really don't have an indicator <clears throat> of the severity of the fire, but in the rear you can re really see it. But I just want to give you an idea of what these two firefighters, of uh, what they did on the, on the uh, rope rescue. We're queued up to the, to the location, uh, DJ. I don't know how well you can see it, but you see the firefighter going over the top. We had a uh, NYPD aviation unit was in the air, and they were able to take this video. And they also reported to us that they saw people hanging. Yeah, we're, 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 yeah, we're making it available. Make sure everyone gets it. Anyone else have any questions? Anyone we'll make have sure, any questions? We'll make sure you all get it. Chief, can you talk a little bit about how difficult it was for firefighters to get inside and get to some of the people? Yeah, sure. So on the third floor, one of the apartment doors was left open where the fire was. The fire was so intense, if you could imagine flames coming out that door and blocking off the stairwell. So normally we go directly up to the floor above the fire, but we were even unable to get past those flames. So we needed the engine company to come in and extinguish some of the fire, and they ran up there immediately and were able to find some unconscious victims and remove them as quickly as possible, and they are um, some of three of our red tag patients. All right, any more questions? Okay, thank you, everyone. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. Um, oh, thank God it wasn't me. <laughs> Hold on.